Everybody, we will be starting the Kaibule and Kalfa Apasai Kalfa Apasai dedication ceremonies in a few minutes, so we need to expedite the line that we might begin the program as scheduled at 12 noon. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadow? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion, my constant friend? His His eye is on the sparrow, and I know He watches me. His eye. And I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. Yes, I sing because. 
watching over me and I know he's watching
Should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is He. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know. He watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. Yes, I sing because I'm free. For His eye is on the sparrow. And I know He watches over me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know He watches. I know. He's watching over me. I know. He's watching over me. And I sing because I'm happy. Hold、oh, on, you know I sing.
and I know he's watching over me. Watching over me. And I know he's watching.
And I heard a voice out of heaven say, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works may follow them. As we enter into this time, celebrating the life of our beloved brother, Dr. T.B. Boyd III, we're going to ask if Dr. Matthew Aiken would come with our invocation, followed by Dr. Quaford Coleman with our greeting. Shall we pray? God, our eternal Father, the God of heaven and earth, the creator and the maker of all things, we come right now bold but humble to the throne of grace. We come, our Father, with gratitude and thanksgiving in our hearts. Thanking you, our Father, first of all, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us that we might have a right to the tree of life. Lord, we come thanking you for this day, thanking you for this hour, thanking you for the life of this our dear brother, we come, our Father, but before we can ask you for anything today, we come confessing our sins and asking you to forgive us of our sins and blot out our transgressions and own us back as your children one more time. God, we ask you right now to have mercy upon us right now. We come, our Father, lifting up the board family right now. We Pray, our Father, that you would wipe tears from their eyes, that you would walk with them, dear Master, and let them know if they lean and depend upon you, that you will carry them, uh, carry them all the way. Oh, dear Master, somebody needs you right now. We pray, our Father, that you would visit us right now. And remember the words that the psalmist said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hill. From whence cometh my help, and know that all of our help come from thee and thee alone. Lord, have mercy on us right now. Lord, help them to realize, our Father, that death is a part of life. And the only way that we can get a chance to see our Jesus Christ, that we have to leave planet Earth. And our only way out is through death. Death is not an enemy, but death is just a friend can cross us over to the other side. Lord, we pray for your preached word. There may be somebody here today that don't know you. We pray that they will be introduced to a man named Jesus, the Savior of the world, Jesus who came and died for our sins. Lord, we just want to say thank you today. We love you and we adore you. In the precious, powerful name of Jesus to Christ, we do pray. Amen. Good afternoon. On behalf of Mrs. Yvette Boyd, the entire Boyd family, the R.H. Boyd Publishing Corporation, the R.H. Boyd Family Endowment Fund, the R.H. Boyd Family of Companies, the National Baptist Congress, the National Missionary Baptist Convention, Citizen Savings Bank, Meharry Medical College, they would have me greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then to acknowledge your presence, whether you are here in the Temple Church of Nashville, Tennessee, or whether you are watching, viewing from the many uh, platforms that are streaming this service live, they would have me say thank you 
for sharing this time with them. This time and our coming together is a source of strength for this family. And then it adds to the national tribute as we celebrate the life of the one and only Dr. T.B. Boyd III. Not only honoring him today as a husband, a father, grandfather, brother, uncle, friend, but honoring him today for an exceptional leader that he was. We thank and praise God for him. But not only as an exceptional leader that he was, but for Dr. Boyd to use his influence and his equity to help so many individuals, young people, churches, other denominations, but a gift to the body of Christ. And so we say today, thank God for Dr. T.B. Boyd III. Thank you for sharing in this celebration. And then I think it's in order that we all rise to our feet and we celebrate the God who gave us Dr. T.B. Boyd III. Won't you stand and let's celebrate the life. Come on, let's celebrate his life. Not a patty cake, but a celebrate. Come on, come on. Come on. No, 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 no. Come on, he lived by the motto, if I can help somebody, then my living will not be in vain. Come on, come on, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. And all of us can say with a reset, keep celebrating. No, no, no. You keep celebrating. All of us can say it with a resounding voice. Dr. T.B. Boyd III, you ride on with King Jesus. No man cannot hinder thee. Come on, let's celebrate. Come on, let's celebrate. In this moment, I invite you to join me as we pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, let us also read in unison the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In this moment, we will now sing our hymn of celebration to God be the glory, followed by our Old Testament reading by Dr. Gerald Dew, our New Testament reading by presiding Bishop, Bishop Joseph Warren Walker III, and another musical selection. Amen. How can I sit A million angels cannot express 
express my gratitude All that I am I ever hope to be I owe it all Now to God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be all the glory for the things our consideration, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, and a portion of verse 11. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and
time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to dance. He, God, hath made everything beautiful in its time. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word. Testament reading today, Revelation 21, 1 through 4. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. For God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Blessed is the reading of God's word. I walk in the pathway of duty, if I work to the close of the day, I shall see the great king and his beauty when I've gone the last mile of the way, when I've gone the last mile of the way, I shall rest at the close of the day. And I know there is joy that awaits me when I've gone the last mile of the way. If for Christ I proclaim the glad story, if I seek his sheep gone astray, I am sure he will show me his glory when I've gone the last mile of the way. When I've gone last mile of the way, I shall rest at the close of the day, for I know there is joy that awaits me when I've gone the last mile of the way. One more time, when I've gone the last mile of the way, I shall rest at the close of the day, and I know there is joy that awaits me. When I've gone the last mile of the way. This time, the Reverend Olivia Cloud will come with the presentation of resolutions. And after resolutions, we will have tributes from Dr. Melvin N. Johnson, Dr. Walter R. Owens, Dr. Gerald L. Bryant, Mrs. Brenda Boyd Walker, Mr. T.B. Boyd IV, and Dr. Lavana LaDonna Yvette Boyd. Amen. Freddie O'Connell and I'm here on behalf of the city. In addition to these resolutions, we did have a special announcement to make today that we've worked on with the family uh, and the Metro Council and my colleagues there. 
Um, it is my honor to announce today that we are proclaiming Sunday, May 15th, Dr. T.B. Boyd the third day for the city of Nashville. So brings me you know, great honor and it's a great privilege to be here as we remember with the family this incredible life and I will turn it over to Reverend Clapp. Thank you. As one might imagine, a man of Dr. T.B. Boyd's stature would uh, generate a number of resolutions and acknowledgments of his passing. So the Boyd family has asked me just to share snippets <laughs> of a few of them in the interest of brevity um, for the program. I do want to acknowledge a resolution from the Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church in Herkimer, Herkimer Texas, Dr. Maurice Johnson, pastor, from, excuse me, a resolution from the Mount Horeb Missionary Baptist Church in Houston, Texas, Dr. S.H. Smith, pastor, a resolution from a resolution of hope from the class uh, Pearl High School class of 1965. This is to TB's family. We, the Pearl High class of 1965, wish you Godspeed as you comfort each other as one was one entity, knowing that TB is now with the angels sitting at the feet of our Lord and Savior. From Tennessee State University, Dr. Whereas Dr. Theophilus Bartholomew Boyd III was a graduate of Tennessee State University and a proud member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated and Nashville's Chi Boule Chapter Sigma Pi Phi Fraternity, TB, as he was affectionately called, loved and served his alma mater with pride and was actively involved in the growth and development of his community. Whereas T, Dr. T.B. Boyd III was a pillar of the national community and an icon among his family and friends, he leaves to cherish his memory, his wife, his children, among numerous other relatives and friends, fraternity brothers and extended family at Tennessee State University, signed Dr. Glenda Glover. From the Nashville alumni chapter of Kalpha Alpha Psi, it says, whereas Brother T. B. Brother Dr. T.B. Boyd was a member of Nashville alumni chapter of Cap Alpha Psi. Therefore, as brothers of Tennessee, excuse me, Nashville, Tennessee alumni chapter chartered April 24th, 1926, we do now bow before God in humble submission to his divine will and commit to be available to encourage, support, and pray for Brother Boyd's immediate family so long as God sees fit. From Meharry Medical College, where Dr. Boyd served as vice chair of the board of directors. It reads, whereas Dr. T.B. Boyd worked with diligence and vigor to champion the goals of the Meharry Medical College throughout the community and the country, and whereas in special recognition of 37 years of distinguished service to Meharry Medical College, the board of trustees acknowledged Dr. T.B. Boyd III by appointing him trustee emeritus. Therefore, be it resolved that we as a community will mourn with the family and continue the great work of Dr. T.B. Boyd. Signed, Nelson L. Adams III, MD, 78, Chairman, Board of Trustees, Meharry Medical College. A letter of resolution from, for, from Mount Zion Baptist Church in Nashville, Bishop Joseph Warren Walker. Say to the Boyd family, today we are honored to celebrate Dr. Boyd's life with you as he was a pillar of Nashville and throughout the country. From the St. John Baptist Church in, I'm sorry, I'm getting my days. Oh, in South Lake, Texas, Dr. Denny Davis, pastor, sends a resolution in loving memory of Dr. Theophilus Bartholomew Boyd III. From the New Mount Zion Baptist Church of Dallas, Texas, Dr. T.L. Brown, pastor, who is also a board member at R.H. Boyd, says, whereas our Heavenly Father gave to us for a while a champion in the person of Dr. Boyd, he was a man of excellence, an innovative leader, and a community partner who was committed to his faith and to his family. From the Progressive National Baptist Convention, whereas 
Dr. Theophilus Bartholomew Boyd lived a life in such godly service and freely gave of his time and energy to serve others. He was known for his business acumen, leadership, honesty, strength, conviction, and his ability to get things done. Respectfully submitted the members and officers of the Progressive National Baptist Convention, Reverend David R. Peoples, President, Dr. A. Wayne Johnson, General Secretary. And from the National Missionary Baptist Convention of America, a resolution, whereas we, the National Missionary Baptist Convention of America, along with our National Baptist Congress, would like to thank Dr. Boyd, along with R.H. Boyd Publishing, for 38 years of partnership and great leadership. We thank God for allowing Dr. Boyd to pour into so many with his wisdom and the multitude of materials. Signed, Dr. Anthony E. Sharp the first, President, Dr. Max A. Miller, General Secretary. Just a few more, if you will bear with me. We have a, res a proclamation honoring Dr. T.B. Boyd. It reads, whereas Dr. Boyd was a prominent member of our community and is, it is fitting and proper for the, National, for the Metropolitan Council to recognize his significant impact on the citizens of Nashville and Davidson County, I, Sharon Hurt, council member at large, and the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, and the undersigned members of the Minority Caucus of the Metropolitan Council do now recognize and honor the life and legacy of Dr. Theophilus Bartholomew Boyd III, signed the 12th of May, 2022. From the Tennessee State House of Representatives, a proclamation as, as, at its closing reads, therefore, I, Cameron Sexton, Speaker of the House of Representatives of the 112th General Assembly of the State of Tennessee, at the request of and in conjunction with Representative Harold M. Love, Jr., do, by, do hereby proclaim that we honor the memory of Dr. Theophilus Bartholomew Boyd III, reflecting fondly upon his impeccable character and his stalwart commitment to living the examined life with courage and conviction, proclaimed in Nashville, Tennessee on the fifth day, May 2022, signed Speaker of the House, Cameron Sexton, and Representative Harold Love. Uh, we have from the state, Tennessee State Senate, a proclamation issued from um, the Randy McNally, Speaker of the Senate. I, Randy McNally, Speaker of the Senate of the 112th General Assembly, in conjunction with the undersigned, do hereby proclaim that we honor the memory of Dr. Theophilus Bartholomew III, reflecting fondly upon his character and commitment living the examined life with courage and conviction. We extend our deepest sympathies and offer our condolences to the family of Dr. Boyd. Signed, Randy McNally, Speaker of the Senate, Brenda Gilmore, Senator, 19th Senate District. And finally, we have a resolution from the Defiant 34 of Kappa Alpha Psi. And it reads, the Defiant 34, line of 1967, Alpha Theta Chapter, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity, take this moment to honor the memory of our brother, our sans, and friend, Dr. T.B. Boyd III. And whereas the Defiant 34 line of 1967 is deeply saddened at the passing of our beloved brother, Dr. T.B. Boyd III, we embrace and mourn with the family because all of us have a common bond. Signed, Henderson M. Moore, Senior Vice President of the 1967 Alpha Theta Line, the Defiant 34. Thank you. Amen. If Dr. Johnson would come and begin our series of tributes. Good afternoon. You know, when I was asked to give a tribute to my friend, Dr. T.B. Boyd III, in two or three minutes, I said, you've got to be kidding. 
We've already seen what an impact this distinguished gentleman had upon our world. So I began to ask myself as I faced this task, what should I share with you? We had so many interests, boating, cars, politics, our beloved Tennessee State University, and of course, world affairs. So let me tell you just a few things that you may not read in the program. I can think fondly of the time that my wife Marcy and I arrived in Nashville and we were invited to the Boyd's lovely home. And as we began to enjoy each other's company, he invited me outside in the rear of the home. And guess what I found out there? Speakers. All the music you ever want to hear just soothingly going out to entertain the deer and the rabbits and everything else of God's creatures that might have been out there. That's when I knew when I listened to Coltrane and Miles Davis that this truly must be the music city. I'll tell you what, when I think about the main theme of TB's life, I can say unequivocally that he was a good man. As I read Yvette's warm letter that appears in the program, I knew that I was right. Because any time your wife can say those wonderful things about you and indicate that she wanted to continue on with that legacy, I knew that this was a good man. How? He loved his God. And he was a true believer. And he demonstrated such by his actions, always caring and supporting the broader community. But secondly, I knew that he loved his family. Yvette, TB the fourth, LaDonna, Chalet, and Justin. You were always first in his heart. And he set such a great example, but I knew that you were the joys of his life. Now I know you're gonna miss him, but rest assured, he's in a much better place, obtaining the rest that he so well deserved. The next thing that I know is that TB loved his university. He lived, he ate, he, he, he bled Tennessee State University. But the main thing is, he was always there to support student services and activities and scholarships. He believed that our youth was our future. And he always, I could count on him to be there. I could count on him not only to support the student activities, but to congratulate the students, encourage them provide internships for them. He was a good man. Now, Rudyard Kipling said it best. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch, that was T.B. Boyd. He carried himself in that way. Now, we're going to miss you, my friend, but your legacy remains. The foundations that you've created and supported will prosper generations of our people to succeed in life. May you rest in eternal peace, because our Father in heaven knows without a doubt that you are a good man.
Good afternoon, everyone. Yvette, T, LaDonna, Shalay, Justin, and the rest of the board family. My heart is heavy today with the loss of my dear friend. You know, losing your best friend is an incredibly difficult thing to face. T and I have been friends since the age of four years old. We lived across the street from each other. We played together. I, I can't remember from the time we were, I first met him when I was four. I hardly can remember a time when I did a date and I didn't see T. Or that we didn't talk on the phone. Or that we didn't do uh, many, many things together. I remember on our birthdays, I always remember May 15th, I would call him and I would let him know that he was still eight months older than I am. <laughs> and he would call me on my birthday in January to let me know that he would be glad to give me a ride to the senior citizens home. <laughs> I, I'm going to miss T so much, it's, it's, it's going to leave a hole in, in, in my heart. We did so many things together. When we were growing up, we did vacations together. We went to Kentucky Lake. We, I mean, we did so many things together as a family, all of us together. Brenda, Geraldine, Alan, all of us together celebrated life and the journey on life so much together. It was, it's, it's incredibly difficult, I tell you. T and I were roommates in college. I remember when he called me to let me know that he had secured in Watson number two, I think it was, room 711. And on top of that, being roommate with TB was an experience. <laughs> T was a little bit, to say, a little OCD. <laughs> I mean, when it came time for room inspection, TB would make sure, I mean, why do we have to take all the desks and the, and the uh, beds out into the hallway and mop the floor? And he was not only OCD with his things, but he was OCD with my things. He would organize my closet to make sure everything was lined up perfectly so that we would get an A in our inspection. TB and I did so many things together, and we talked about what we were going to do when we both slowed down and uh, stepped back from our many responsibilities. I'm going to miss him so, so much, and it's hardly a day that goes by that I don't think about him. I'm going to do my best, Yvette, to be a support to you. You just remind me if I fall short, because I love him, and I know that's what he'd want me to do. But I can tell you, in parting, and I can say this, that as long as TB's memory lives in my heart and in my mind, he'll still be here with us. So he will survive and continue as long as we all remember him in our hearts and minds. So I'd, I'd say to Def, you know, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Because he will continue to live in our hearts and minds, and we love him, and we will keep his memory alive in our minds. Thank you. Yvette, the Boyd family, you have our deepest condolences from my wife, Romelia, and me. In the, earliest, in the early 20th century, renowned scholar and civil rights activist, Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois wrote about the talented 10th, the African-American leadership who, through education, would make a profound, profound difference in the lives of African-Americans. His overarching theme to whom much is given much is expected. To me, Dr. Theopolis Bartholomew Boyd III was the epitome of this axiom. He used his professional training and knowledge of resources and business skills to influence others to empower themselves to become high achievers. 
I first met TB 54 years ago when he pledged Kappa Alpha Psi at Tennessee State University. He impressed me with his even temperament, never too low or never too excited. He was a rock solid young man who I could tell his parents put a lot of love and training into his growth and development. When his sister came to state, he asked me to help him watch out for her well-being. He was always about taking care of family and friends. I found these characteristics to be a strong indicator of a future leader. I was one of TB's and Yvette's first house guests in their current home. One morning, I heard a loud noise in the backyard. When I went to see what it was, I found TB in the backyard fixing a broken sprinkler line. His work ethic kicked in, and he did the job that had to be done at the time and place. I thought he could have called a gardener, but T was the type to meet a task head on and see it to its end. The next day, he went on a run. After running five miles, he said, let's take a ride. He drove down to the donut shop up for a few donuts. I asked him, how do you run five miles and then stop at the donut shop? T responded, you put in the hard work up front so that you can savor the enjoyable things in life. And then he gave me that TB smile. When he was the president of 100 Black Men of Middle Tennessee, I was the president of 100 Black Men of Sacramento, California. We would see each other at various conferences. We always discussed how to use our platforms as Kappa men and presidents of 100 Black Men to better the educational and economic opportunities for aspiring leaders. Because of his insight, planning skills, and encouragement, I went back to Sacramento and with three other Kappa men and 100 Black Men members, we started the Northern California African American Young Male Conference, which 33 years later is still in full effect. I will always be indebted to TB for his encouragement and vision. TB was a man among men because he was always looking to improve environments and lives. I once said that if I had a son, I would want him to have the style, skills, and courage of Brother TB. God saw fit to call Dr. TB Boyd III home to glory but he made sure TB left an indelible imprint on all that he interacted with and loved him. Rest easy on the golden shores, good brother and friend, for a life well lived in the service to others. You have earned your rightful place on the scrolls of the talented 10th. Thank you. Greetings to all, and especially the ones that I haven't seen in such a long time. My name is Brenda Boyd Walker, the middle sibling to my oldest brother we call TB. Our parents, TB Boyd Jr. and Mabel Landrum Boyd, had four children, TB Boyd III, Geraldine, Brenda, and William Allen. We all are part of the six generations of the Boyds, and we are collectively appreciative, excited, and encouraged to have four additional generations that now follow us and continue the family legacy. 
which is to be the best version of themselves. Of course, I always thought both of my brothers, as they are, was tall, dark, handsome, and intelligent. As children growing up on Almeda Street in North Nashville, TV was also one of, the, one of our protectors when necessary from an early age. Now, Geraldine, I don't know if you remember this, but we found our way into a bit of trouble that resulted in both of us running full speed for our lives across the playground occupied now by Pearl Cone School. Now, I must say that I had a creative way with words when I am emphasizing a point. As Geraldine, as Geraldine and I were preparing to face the potential result of my boldness, TV appeared from the alley and it seems as if the dark became light and the other children turned tail from his presence alone. I don't know what they were looking at, but his presence had the ability to be a source of security. For some, leadership is a choice or an aspiration. For TV, it was a generational expectation. Those leadership traits were presented in, even in situations where others would have lightened up. His leadership skills had been on display since he was a child. In an early display of his skills, he caught the measles and then ensured all of his siblings collaborated around him during this process. And we all caught the measles. This, accident, this accidental, sophisticated level of protection continued during our matriculation at Tennessee State University. When I arrived on campus, it was clear that TB had already ensured that every male student understood TB's sisters are off limits. <laughs> he absolutely ensured everyone was aware. I could continue all day reminiscing about my brother TB. But without a doubt, no, I will love him forever. It is hard to believe on May 3rd, 2022, that the Lord called our oldest brother home. And on this day, May 12th, we would be celebrating his life and transition. Three days before his 75th birthday. I feel the absence of his physical presence while rejoicing for his spirit's freedom. I want to again thank everyone for being here, for those who travel great distance, or those who just simply travel down the street. You are appreciated. We praise God for the life of T.B. Boyd III. Be assured, family, we are prepared. We are encouraged, and we are confident, and we are one. The Boyd family will continue to provide communities across the globe with opt optimism, kindness, and the belief that anything is possible. <sighs> Rest peacefully, T.B. Boyd III. Rest peacefully, my big brother. And rest peacefully, the child of God. 
Thank you. And now I got to go after that. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you, Pastor Drumright, the Temple Church family, for allowing us the opportunity to celebrate the life of my father, T.B. Boyd III. And thank all of you for sharing this with us today. I would just like to say a few words. I was thinking over the past week how privileged I have been over the years to have known uh, Theophilus Bartholomew Boy III, or AKA my father, and thinking about the many times that we had and spent together. And then I continued to think about the times that I had to spend with T.B. Boy Jr. And then also continued to, to think how I had the opportunity to spend time with T.B. Boyd Sr. as well. So realizing that, I immediately came to the conclusion that I have been truly blessed and have been truly honored to have known every Theophilus Bartholomew Boyd that has ever lived up to this moment. including, thank you so much, and including Theophilus Bartholomew Boyd V, which is seated right there. <laughs> he just turned 15. Watch out now. Y'all don't want none of this. He also, he's also my bodyguard as well as my son. <laughs> and I was thinking about the similarities of these individuals. And one thing that there was a common thread, and that common thread was the desire and commitment to forge and build. I'm not speaking only with regards to business, not in publishing, not in banking, but in regards to the family, to the family unit, to advancing and supporting and loving each other. And one of the things that I would ask in that same spirit, and I was to ask each one of you sometime today, tomorrow, to call a family, friend, loved one, and let them know how much they mean to you. Let them know how they've touched your life. For time is short and tomorrow is not promised. The one caveat that I have is that you call them or meet face to face, preferably. No IMs, no text, no email, no face chat, no snapbook, <laughs> no Insta, but call them and speak to them so they know how much you mean to them and they feel your sincerity because you know the human voice speaks to the heart. My father's favorite movie was The Wizard of Oz. And at the end of that movie, the characters receive their rewards from the wizard for their arduous journey. The Tin Man received a heart. I remember the wizard saying to the Tin Man, the heart is not judged by not only how much you love, but how much you are loved by others. Show your love for others and reach out to them. In closing, I am reminded with what my mother, Dr. Melody Boyd, would always say and continues to say. Son, God loves you and so do I. 
And allow me to say on behalf of the Boyd family, God loves you all, and so do we. In the words of my father, T.B. Boyd III, may God bless you real good. Good afternoon. The last words that I ever heard my father say to me were, I love you. And there's nothing that compares to that father-daughter bond. I've always held my father's hand as a child, as an adult, and as he was transitioning from one life to the next. There are no words that can express this deep sadness and love that simultaneously fill this time and space. But we all know that death is not an ending. It's merely a segue into the next life. So I know that my father is alive and well, and he's looking down at all of us right now. My father lived a tremendously full life. He was such an adventurer, if you will. As you've heard from his other family and friends, he loved to go boating and traveling and just doing all of these fun and exciting things. And so I'm glad that I inherited some of that from him. His life was full. It, he had lots of family, friends, success, adventure, and community. And through the pain and grief, we are fortunate to have so many wonderful memories. My father lived a life that is truly an example of excellence, and for that, we are thankful and we are blessed. My father was always very present. He was at school events, taking us to church, going to pageants with me, attending award ceremonies, taking us to band practice, we had family vacations, birthdays, and so much more. So that is something that I will truly miss. And to my mom, thank you for nurturing us and for loving my father. You both created a life and a legacy. And today, on your birthday, I'm sorry that you have to bury your best friend, but we still honor and celebrate you today. As you know, or as most of you know, my father was a perfectionist. You heard he had OCD, to say the least. <laughs> he paid great attention to detail, and he always took great pride in his efforts and his abilities. I can hear him right now, and I've, I've kind of heard him all throughout this week saying, now, LaDonna, make sure it's right. Make sure to do it right. So I hope that in this time and in this space and in this moment that, Dad, we've made you proud. It's a very surreal moment. The air feels different, time feels different, and my senses experience the world in a different manner, and it's a combination of chaos and calm. My father and I often shared many quiet moments, basking in the stillness away from the demands of the world. We would go for car rides and literally just have silence. <laughs> um, we enjoyed the stillness, we enjoyed the peace, and we enjoyed each other's presence, and I can still feel his presence in those quiet moments. The opportunity for stillness is a gift. As my father was transitioning, the last thing that he heard me say were, I love you, and we prayed over him, and I whispered to him my favorite scripture. The scripture is Exodus 14, 14, and it says, the Lord will fight for you, you need only to be still. In some translations it says, ye shall hold your peace. In this passage, the Israelites were fleeing Pharaoh, and they asked Moses, why did you bring us here to die? But Moses told them not to be afraid and to be still, and that God will always make a way. God told Moses to stretch out his staff, and the Red Sea was parted, and the Israelites crossed onto dry ground. And the key to being able to do that was stillness and calm and trusting in the Lord. My father often tried to create those dry ground experiences for other people to cross. He instilled the importance of building and leaving a legacy, and his faith was a vital part of his life. He always wanted to make the path a little bit clearer for someone else behind him. When my grandfather passed away, my father was quoted as saying, it is a day of peace, a day of tranquility, 
a day of progress and a day of recommitment to the very principles our forefathers laid down before us. Although the mantle has fallen on my shoulders, I will not let it hit the ground. It is now my turn to send off final words to my father. My father often said, to God be the glory. Though this is not a happy time, it is a joyous time. There is joy and peace in knowing that heaven awaits the righteous. My father has joined the realm of angels, and we have gained an ancestor. He dedicated his life to leading others to Christ, and now he's able to sit at Christ's feet. He was a dedicated and faithful servant, and now he has received his reward in heaven. He is at peace, and though we see the stillness of death, he is experiencing the fullness of God. We now carry on his legacy, and for that, to God be the glory. Thank you. Amen. At this time, let us receive Mr. Justin Boyd for a musical selection, and then we'll have words of comfort from Dr. T.L. Brown, the reading of the obituary silently, and then a music selection from Dr. Bobby Jones and company. Amen. Good afternoon. This song holds a very special spot in my heart. It's a story about a father's unconditional love for his son and his family even if that means paying the ultimate price. And every time I listen to the song or I think about it, I always know that my father, without a shadow of a doubt, would have done the exact same thing because he loved us so much. And it also holds another very special spot in my heart because I sang the song to him literally minutes before he passed. It was the last song that he heard on this earth and the last song he ever heard me sing. So, here is Lost in the Waves. At the edge of the Atlantic Can't bring myself to swim I choked back the tears for 22 years, drowning in shadows of him. The waves that shout a pattern long after they're gone. The lines that they trace, they quickly erase, but something still lingers. Lost in the waves, I am lost in the waves. No one but me and the silent black sea. I am lost in the waves. A vision in the moonlight, a family on the beach. A boy on his own by the undertow throne, far beyond his father's reach. He's caught in the riptide. A man has to choose. There's a race to be won for the life of his son. But someone has to lose. in the waves he was lost in the waves salt water burns the tide always turns when you're lost in the waves now I'm the one sinking there's no solid ground and I can't help thinking drowned now knee deep in the water I feel my father's touch and though fully grown I've still never known how to love someone that much lost in the waves but 
To God be the glory if I were in the National Baptist Congress sitting on the stage I could hear Dr. Boy saying to God be the glory he would, God be the glory he would go on to say we have a blessing here today to God be the glory even in this circumstance we have a blessing here today to God be the glory can we just put our hands together and celebrate this family as we honor this day? When I received the call from LaDonna to share words of comfort, I said to her, I said, now, LaDonna, I'm a preacher. I know your dad. I knew about the OCD. I knew about how he loves to do things decently and in order. He was a perfectionist. I said, so that I can be in order, tell me exactly what your definition of words of comfort are. She said, we will have a eulogy. I said, good, good, good. She said, just a few remarks. I said, thank you, I will be in order. When I think about Dr. Bowen, when I thought about his passing, immediately my wife said, honey, I'm taking off. We have to be there because he was such a great man. When I thought about attending our first National Baptist Congress in 1986, and, I, and every time I think about the National Congress back then, I would think about the March for Jesus Parade. I said to my wife, I, sh I should put my white suit on and get my board member. I just feel like I should have a, a white suit on and my board member pin. Being on, I just think about him marching with Dr. Sam Smith and others in that March for Jesus parade. I just still see him leading with the pom-poms in his hand, the music playing, entering into the halls or either into the ballrooms and leading the way. Hail the National Baptist Congress. You know, I still, just those memories will be there forever. And the Lord allowed me to have personal moments with Dr. Boyd when he would come to Dallas. Uh, sometimes Dr. C.C. Robinson or Dr. Nehemiah Davis said, Dr. Boyd is coming and we need you to pick him up. I said, oh Lord, let me get my Mercedes Benz out, get it to the detail shop, get it cleaned up. <laughs> and on one occasion when I picked him up and got him back to the airport, he, he left his sunglasses uh, in the car and I didn't know it until uh, he had left and I got back to the car. I said, oh Lord, and, and I was afraid to touch him at first. I, I got home and I said to my wife, I said, Dr. Boyd left his sunglasses. I said, I really want to put them on, but I'm not. I said, I want to see what it looks like from the eyes of a visionary like that. Uh, but, but I never put them on, but I did make sure I got them back to him uh, because I just wanted him to have them. We had the opportunity to honor him, the New Mount Zion Church. We have a gala uh, in December each year, and we had the mayor of the city to come out and others and it just so happened we were honoring him that night. Dick Gregory was in town for another event, and he heard who we were honoring. He said, I'm going, and he was kind enough to come over and give remarks that night. Uh, I just shall forever remember and thank God for the life of Dr. T.B. Boyd the third. And I was thinking how we were at lunch one day, and I had picked him up. Matter of fact, it was breakfast, and he noticed my watch. For those who know, he loved watches too, collecting watches. Well, I didn't have a Rolex on, mine was just a Bulgarian, but he, he noticed right off it was a distinct watch. And he, you know, and, and I think it was some moments like that, he just kept watching little things about 
Dr. Brown is my wife, will tell you I, I'm somewhat of a perfectionist. I like it done right. I like it in order. Uh, and I just shall never f forget the memories of Dr. T.B. Boyd III. And so when the Donna asked me to give a few remarks here today, I said, Lord, what can I just share just to comfort that family briefly with a few words? And, and I thought about uh, Dr. Boyd in Pearl High School. Now, I learned this in the car on the way over here today, that he played the trumpet in high school. And he also played the trumpet at Tennessee State University. I said, that's Dr. Boyd, playing the trumpet, being instrumental in everything that he does. And as I, as I thought about that, I began to just reminisce over the short time that I had with him when he placed me on the board of directors for the Orange Board Corporation. Uh, I went back and found that picture of my very first meeting on March the 25th of 2015. I found that picture where he pinned my badge on me as a board member of the board of directors. And I said how humbling it was just to sit in meetings up that close to watch him. I had the privilege of him as we came into one board meeting. He was sitting in his chair facing the wall, Dr. Alex, and we, we knew something was going on. And he said to us about half of that meeting, I, I, I need to make a decision. And the Lord has helped me make it. I need to bring LaDonna onto this board. And immediately we all agreed. He had tears in his eyes just thinking about that moment. We welcomed her uh, into the board that day, and, uh, and even as he continued to transition, his health declined, and we were preparing for LaDonna's first meeting. I said to Dr. Groves before our morning breakfast, we need to have prayer for LaDonna before we ever even go out, because she's going to need God's covering his blessings. And, and I thought about that, because even when uh, we brought Dr. Boyd to Dallas. Uh, and I wonder, and I know now how Sister Miss Yvette Boyd and Sister Brown are just so close and just sharing. Uh, but I tell her, honey, now we don't have Dr. Boyd's money. Now we can't, you, you going and buying this jewelry, buying this club, we can't. She said, honey, but she's my friend. Oh, I said, okay, but well, let's, let's keep it on the brown level over here. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but what a joy to have similar, to have similar interests. And I thought about that because that's a quote by Pauline Phillips, LaDonna, that says, if you want your children to keep their feet on the ground, put responsibility on their shoulders. And I think your father being a visionary, said before he even left her, he wanted to put some responsibility on your shoulders to help keep your feet on the ground. And with him playing the trumpet, and it was confirmed today as I take my seat, when I heard about the music playing to the animals, knowing how he loved music. I had to get my son a few years ago to teach me how to download music onto my iPod at that time. You know, we download music now. But back in the day before we had Wi-Fi and could download music in the country back in Texas, we had hi-fi stereos, <laughs> big wooden stereo. I heard the amen, somebody know what I'm talking about. On those hi-fi stereos, they would play 45s, 33s, and 78s. And on that 45, it had a side A and a side B. And you would play that 45, and you know, the needle would get dull sometimes. And, and my older brothers taught me how to take a nickel or a penny or a quarter and get a rubber band and put it on there to hold the needle down so it would play. And when side A would finish playing, if you didn't have an automatic system that would flip it over, come on somebody, you, you, you would have to physically pick up the needle, flip over the record from side A to side B to hear the other side. Can I tell us what God did the other day? He said, TB side A been played long enough. You made contributions, you poured in life of others, you left a marvelous legacy. It's now time for me to flip it over 
from side A to side B. So I just want to say to this family, he's not gone. He'll never be forgotten. We can always listen to his music. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that God, the everlasting Father, listen, he gives power to the faint. To them to have no might, he increases their strength. Even a youth shall faint and be weary. But sister Yvette, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And family, you'll be able to walk and not faint. Trust God. As you're reading the obituary to the family, friends, those of us that have gathered here today for the home going of my friend, most of you that know my works and Mr. Boyd and I were great friends. He was the first one to support my ministry early in the 80s. He knew I couldn't sing, but he thought I could do something. Without him, there would have been no Bobby Jones gospel. There were two of them, Mr. Boyd and Richard Manson were the ones that helped me to leap in this ministry as we did. Just a few ideas of what he did for me. He paid for my first CD. Mr. Holmes was the pianist. And Mr. Boyd liked the song called This Little Light of Mine. I'm going to let it shine. He liked kind of quiet music, you know. So that's what we did. And then uh, I was president of Black Expo that we had in Nashville, Tennessee, and some folks broke in our house and tried to rob us, and all of that kind of saved my life. Then downtown Nashville, he paid for the star that's on the walk down there in front of the Country Music Museum. I think it cost him $7,000. What a friend, y'all, huh? This is a Baptist church. You can say amen. All right. For all the wonderful things that he did in my life, and for Donna and Yvette and everybody, I love you all so much. Today is a sad day for me. But this song says, someday, It will all be it's over. Will all be over? And we'll join and hands. Yes, we will. Join. Join hands together. Hands together. Someday. 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 someday we'll see a 
master's we'll face. See our master's face. And we'll be all right. Yeah. We'll be all right. That'll be yeah, a happy day. Yeah, yeah. Himself unto us in Jesus Christ. We thank God for the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. To all the ministers of the gospel, to Miss Yvette, to this entire beloved and bereaved family. We thank God for the life. We thank God for the witness 
And even in this moment, we can say, thank God for the rest for Dr. T.B. Boyd III. As I listened to Dr. Brown, I thought about even this congregation's connection to the Boyd family that our late pastor, our founder, Mr. Michael Lee Graves was employed as director of publications at R.H. Boyd, that if you were to exit this part of our sanctuary, that the Carlton Petway Suite, all of the furniture was provided by Dr. T.B. Boyd III and Miss Yvette Boyd. As you look at the stone wall, most of the stones were donated by Dr. T.B. Boyd III and Miss Yvette Boyd, and we're grateful for their indelible impact on this congregation. Dr. Brown, as a youngster who grew up in this church as a participant in the National Baptist Sunday School Congress, the first all-white suit I bought was because of Dr. T.B. Boyd III. And I used to love to see the great parade as we sang, oh, hell, the Baptist Congress. Amen, amen, amen. It, on this moment, if you would, Go with me to one verse of scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 18, and I thank God for Dr. LaDonna because she said quite a bit of what I had already penned, amen. The word of the Lord reads, Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon feast. You will be missed because your seat will be empty. Tomorrow is the new moon feast. You will be missed because your seat will be empty. I want to talk just for a few moments as we celebrate Dr. Boyd's life from the thought, a seat of significance, a seat of significance. That this one verse reflects the sentiment of Jonathan to David because the reality is there's a little issue between Saul and David. An issue to such a magnitude that a plan has been designed that will force David to be absent from the physical seat at the table that he held when the new moon feast was celebrated. And Jonathan, he tells David, he speaks from his heart and he says, here is the true reality. You're going to be missed because you're seat will be empty. And he was talking literally about a physical seat that David was going to sit in, but there was something more important. That seat just wasn't a literal seat. It represented the place of significance that David played in the life of Jonathan. And saints, I believe God gives us permission to use a little spiritual license. We can say in the words of, and in the spirit of Jonathan, as we speak to the essence of Dr. Boyd, Dr. Boyd, there are many tomorrow festivals that will come, and you will be missed because your seat will be empty. I believe that there are places in the home, the family can tell you about, that he sat in, places in his office, places on boards, that literal seats that belong to Dr. T.B. Boyd III. But not only are we talking about literal seats, we're using seats today as the power of legacy, the power of legacy that we leave behind and the places in the hearts of others that we hold. And so saints of God, when we think about Dr. Boyd's life, we need to remember the seats of significance that he leaves for us to set for others. First place I want to leave with you that Dr. Boyd has left the significant seat of lineage. One of the things that I recall hearing him talk about was in 1979 when the weight of leading the family and leading the family business fell upon his shoulders and he talked about the importance of representing your family name well. Dr. Boyd represented his family name well. Not only did he represent his family name well, because he had the significant seat of lineage, he also made God's first institution his priority. And saints, God's first institution is not the church. God's first institution is the family. 
And Dr. Boyd was a five-star family man. Saints of God, a whole lot of people can say a whole lot of things about us. But what will our family say? And you heard the Boyd family speak. And they didn't necessarily use the word seat of significance or the significant seats of lineage. But what they really were saying is that he made family a priority. Dr. Boyd leaves with us the significant seat of lineage. But he also, secondly, in his life, we are reminded of the significant seat of sacred presentation. What are you talking about? Dr. Boyd gave leadership to some of the most innovative and creative presentations of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Be it in printed form, be it through Congress, be it in other ways, he shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with those all over the world. And God calls for all of us who believe in Jesus Christ to also set the sacred seat of sacred presentation. What does that mean? You ought to lift Jesus up however God has enabled you to do it. Whatever God has anointed you to do, be like Dr. Boyd and learn how to offer a sacred presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Their Bibles, their books, and all of us know about the red hymn book. Y'all know about the red, because uh, you have to make a distinction between the green hymn book and the red hymn book. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. But it was sacred presentation. And the hymn writer put it like this. If you really want to embody the significant seat that Dr. Boyd leaves behind, embody it this way. Lift him up by living as a Christian ought. Let the world and you the Savior see. Then men and women will gladly follow him who once taught out. Draw all men unto me. He reminds us of the sacred seat of lineage, the sacred seat of uh, uh, sacred presentation, but also the significant seat of success and achievement. I won't go through the laundry list because you read it in the obituary. Those things like receiving a trumpet award, who's who, Thurgood Marshall Award, the, the many others. But here's what I believe that reflects. Dr. Boyd had a spirit of excellence and his mantra was do it well or not at all. Do it well or not at all. And maybe you will not ascend to publication heights. Maybe your assignment is teaching some young person do it well or not at all. Maybe your assignment may even be cleaning up a cafeteria, cling to the glory of God. Have a Dr. T.B. Boyd the third spirit that whatever you do, you do it as unto the Lord significant seat of success and achievement but then also in Dr. Boyd's life he reminds us of the significant seat of investment and opportunity what do you mean there are many masses all over the world many preachers I can testify for myself the first national preaching platform I ever got was through the National Baptist Sunday School Congress. Their preachers, men and women, who got to teach because of Dr. Boyd. I think about the fact, and it's so critical, even in the times in which we live, there were young people in this church that I knew of in other churches in this city. The only reason they got to travel from Nashville to Orlando, from Nashville to Detroit, from Nashville to L.A. was because Dr. Boyd provided opportunities through the Sunday School Congress. And if ever there was a time, our young people of this present generation need to be exposed to the best of who we are. It's right now and Dr. Boyd set that president. Not only did Dr. Boyd do it, we saw it even with Miss Yvette as we were taught etiquette. We were taught how to speak properly. We were taught how to dress properly. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. We were taught appropriate church fashion. Amen. Because they understood even collectively the significant seat 
of invested opportunity and exposure. When God elevates you, don't forget to reach back. When God promotes you, don't forget to open up the door for somebody else. We saw in Dr. Boyd one who used his accesses on every level to open up windows and doors for others. Saints of God, it is a selfish and self-centered Christian that can only do for them and theirs. But if we're going to operate in the spirit of Christ and follow even in the significant seats of Dr. T.B. Boyd III, we've got to commit ourselves to be givers of opportunity and openings of doors for other people because as we do it, what we are doing is impacting generations to come. Dr. Boyd leaves with us also as we look at his life. The significant seat of balance. I'm glad that Dr. LaDonna talked about that. He was a traveler. He was a serious person. Very serious. Business. But, but Dr. Boyd had a good sense of humor too. He explored the world. God save us from folks who think that being a Christian means you have to live a humdrum life. God has called us to live a balanced life. Sometimes serious, sometimes laughing, sometimes traveling. And in fact, all you got to do is read Ecclesiastes 3 because it says to everything there is a time and a purpose under the heavens. And one of the things we know is that Dr. Boyd lived in that balance. He enjoyed his life. He exposed family to the great things. He exposed others to the great things of life because when you live for Jesus Christ, God will give you opportunities to bear witness that God can take you from here to there and to God be the glory for the things that God has done. And I thank God that both Dr. Boyd and Miss Yvette made it a principle in their life to pour into the lives of others. Miss Yvette, I, I share this. Dr. LaDonna, I don't know. After I was initiated into Cap Alpha Psi, there are some in our fraternity out of my proximity of relationship that I might call dad so-and-so and dad such-and-such. And, such. and so one day, your dad asked me, well, why is it that you don't call me dad boy? I said, well, Dr. Boyd, you probably more like a cool uncle. <laughs> and so while I was in graduate school, no lie, once a month, there came an envelope from the National Baptist Publishing Board with a letter because Dr. Boyd had very memorable handwriting. It would say, we are proud of you. Keep up the good work from Uncle T.B., and Aunt Yvette, and there was always a check, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> because there was investment into the well-being of others. We're living in some mean-spirited times, saints of God. And the children of God are called to operate in a Dr. T.B. Boyd the third spirit. And if you can't give anything tangible, open up your mouth and say something positive. If you can't sow some kind of physical seed, make sure you become a bounty of encouragement for some young person who needs to know. Maybe you give one of the seniors a call. I like what he said. Don't text him. Don't email. But every now and again, call someone and just say, I love you. Because the truth be told, it is those seeds that have a way of giving birth to a bountiful harvest. The last thing we'll leave you today, Dr. Boyd reminds us of the significant seed of lineage, the significant seed of sacred presentation, the significant seed of success and achievement, the, su the significant seed of invested opportunity and exposure, the significant seed of balance, but you even heard Dr. LaDonna say it. Dr. Boyd leaves with us the reminder of the significant seat of paying attention to the details. If you ever sat in a meeting with Dr. Boyd, Dr. Boyd didn't like things to last forever. He would say it doesn't take all day 
to do something well. But he gave attention to the details. As a publisher, you have to pay attention to the details. You have to be sure that the editorial process has been done to a certain prestige. You pay attention to those details, but I also am appreciative that when it came to leadership transition, he paid attention to the details. Those of us who bear witness that many times, if you are from the Baptist way, sometimes leadership transition didn't happen seamlessly. But even because Dr. Boyd was attentive to the details, you saw leadership transition happen even seamlessly because he was detail oriented. The things about his life were detail oriented. The way he presented himself, he was detail oriented because you got to tell the truth. He was one of the sharpest and the smoothest men to ever walk. Somebody ought to say amen. And he paid attention to the details. But, but Bishop Dupree, as I close this message, I'm so glad that in all of those attentiveness to details, Dr. Boyd made sure he paid attention to the ultimate detail. There is a detail that all of us must pay attention to. And in his childhood, he was raised in the holy faith. He was raised by parents to believe in Jesus Christ. He was reared in the Lord's church. He was exposed to the teachings of Jesus Christ. But because Dr. Boyd was attentive to the details, he knew that mama's faith and daddy's faith was great, but he had to have his own faith. And when you pay attention to the details, you understand like Dr. Boyd uh, that you've got to make your own reservation with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, years ago, uh, he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as his personal savior. He made uh, his commitment known uh, by going down uh, in the liquid grave. Uh, he spent his life calling uh, pointing others to Jesus Christ. Uh, he spent his life uh, showing others uh, that Jesus is the way. Uh, and here's what I'm so glad about. Uh, Miss Yvette, uh, family, in just a few moments, uh, we're going to make a trip uh, out to Woodlawn Cemetery. Uh, we will commit Dr. Boyd's body uh, back to the earth, uh, ashes to ashes, uh, earth to earth, uh, and dust to dust. Uh, but because he was into the details, Tales. This is where our hope lies. It says ensure and certain hope of resurrection to Jesus Christ our Lord. What am I saying, presiding bishop? Here's what I'm really saying. See you later, Dr. Boyd. Rest from your labors, but there will come a time when we will see you again. I hear the Bible say, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, the dead in Christ shall rise first. See you later, Dr. Boyd. I don't know how it works up there, but maybe you'll be the chairperson of Heaven's Printing. I don't know how it works up there, but God will use you to point others in areas of business but here's what I do know that when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we 
Sheol, see Jesus will sing and shout the victory. Rest, rest. But there will come a day the Lord is going to crack the sky. He that shall come said he will come and he will not tarry long. Miss event, children and family, hold on because God will keep you in the midst of the storm. Watch ye, therefore, you know not the day when the Lord shall call your soul away. But if ye labor, striving for the right, ye shall wear a golden crown. Soon as my feet strike Zion, I'm going to lay down my heavy burden. I'm going to put on my robe in glory. Shout and tell the story. Come over hills and mountains up to the crystal fountain. See you later, Dr. Boy. Rest. But after a while, there is a great reunion. And we'll see Dr. Boyd again. But oh, I want to see Jesus. Oh, I want to see him. Just to look upon his face. Let us sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Dr. Boyd cares all past. Home at last, ever to rejoice. come today we're thankful for all that you have given to us for your blessing of life and for your blessing of walking with us we have experienced the sting of death and death has taken away our loved one in the person of Dr. T.B. Boyd III. Yet, we grieve not as those who have no hope because Dr. Boyd has taught us and he has believed himself that there is one who's taken away the sting of death. And there is one who has risen from the grave. So we celebrate his life and all of the things that he has left for us to remember. We thank you, God, for the love he has for his family, we thank you for the love he shared with friends. We thank you for the love that and determination that he led this company with. We thank you, O oh God, for the example that he provided to all of us. Now, as we leave this place, Celebrating his great life. Help us to remember his legacy. The things that he taught us. The things of faith. The things of hope. The things that related to trust in you. And when we have left this place and the crowds have gone home. We pray that you will continue to be with his family and walk with them every step of the way. Thank you, O oh God, for him being a thoughtful man, 
that he put into progress continuity and continuation of his company before he left here. Help that we might follow his example that we might give hope that we might hold to your unchanging hand in terms of promise and that we might live the victorious life because he lives within us. Bless this family. Bless this congregation. Bless all that has been said and done here today that we may celebrate this life now and forevermore. In the precious name of Jesus, and for his sake do we pray. Amen. We prepare now to make the journey to Woodlawn Cemetery for interment. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may the blessings of Almighty God fully revealed in Jesus Christ be yours this day and always. God bless. Sing his mercy and his grace in the manger, bright and blessed. He'll be there for us today. When we all get to heaven, what a day!
Yeah.